Okay, I'm going to continue recording the Einstein article notes I wrote at Joseph Beaton in uh, 2008. It's about eight years ago. I stopped in the middle of page 24. Um, there's about 50 pages. I, I should have enough room to, to do the rest if I go fast. But before I do that, like I mentioned before, I, that I listened to, a, I saw a video today. It's by a by a priest. It's he's called Michael Himes from 1997. He's actually a professor of of uh, theology uh, from in Brooklyn. Well, he's a professor of theology at Boston College, and he, he teaches, he preaches all over the United States. Well, the lecture is uh, 30 minutes long. I, I, like I said, that was pretty simple, and uh, it didn't have any proofs. Okay, anyway. Uh, I, uh, before I start, I want to uh, just make, make make a good break anyway. Uh, two weeks ago exactly, I did a bit of a summary of Wittgenstein. And a week ago, mostly Nietzsche, Husserl and Cohen. It's a big... These are, I don't know, I didn't think there were any great philosophers in the 20th century, but maybe I was wrong. Um, so briefly, add that. it makes a big difference because it, it brings your system up to the 20th century. You can Nietzsche, basically, he was influenced by Schopenhauer and who saw like a crisis because people were losing faith in, in religion I mean, uh, and also in metaphysics. Um, I mean, even uh, great philosophers and great scientists. So there was the downfall this void created. And Nietzsche was trying to find a solution to that. So we had to find new values we had to find new meaning in life and so with no philosophy uh, and no religion and some people saw, saw uh, science was not enough to fill this void so Nietzsche's idea was just to find meaning in life in art in a way it's, it's like you know, I think he was open influenced by Schopenhauer was influenced by Buddhists I think I think his idea was like, uh, he said, okay, if there is no God, fine, God is dead. We can create our own paradise ourselves. His idea, I think, is that we make art, we make, we make people. We make people as beautiful as we can, like, and we make the world as beautiful as we can. And we use art for inspiration. That, that was Nietzsche's way to find meaning in life. So, um, so his idea that everybody can become like a superman or overman. Um, so that's how you find meaning in life. For uh, for Cohen, he he was able to say surprisingly that. We can go beyond Kant's system by using his uh, principles of, me of metaphysics and also at the same time use natural science of Newton, what he was before Einstein, Newton, etc. But really, he, Cohen, I think they said he revised the metaphysics principles, and his idea was that. Both metaphysics, metaphysical principles can develop with time. It's, it's dynamic, and also um, uh, natural science also develops. So we can modify those principles. So he like unified uh, natural.
natural science and metaphysics. To, so this way we can know the pneumona, which or a thing in the world, thing in itself, which Kant said we cannot know. Einstein had a way of knowing it also and created the theory of general relativity and make, made predictions which were confirmed. So that was his way. Uh, okay, so Cohen did that. Husserl, first Husserl followed Kant, just like I did. And he, he argued that we can, so we can only know the mind. So he tried off to cut off the phenomena, phenomena of the mind from the world and just consider the phenomena of, of the mind and see what we can know about it. But later he changed his mind and said, yes, we can know the world um, of new pneumonia. So really, phenomena exists and continues to the world because he said he had several methods like that. You have different perspectives that we have of the world, so studying them gives us different views of objects. He even said that uh, the different senses, like sight, hearing, and all that, can confirm each other. So an idea I had really before that, also I thought of it before I read his work, his, the summary of him, and also that um, he had a, a method very similar to Maimonides that we can know an object by uh, removing from it anything that is accidental, that is not essential, that does not belong to it. And in the end you end up with just with the, its essence, just what is essential to it. You don't destroy its, its uh, nature. Maimonides had a similar idea 800 years ago uh, to know God, because God could not be known. That you try and prove things that God cannot be and any, everything that you can prove that he cannot be, you get closer and closer to him. Because, for example, for him he said, if you cannot pre prove that God is not corporeal, then you get closer, though he's not sim that, that God is simple, or that God is immutable, or he used the Aristotelian philosophy. And so his throat that phenomenology, maybe that's where it derives its name, because he kind of unified the, the phenomena in, in the mind and the phenomena in the world, because it can be known. Okay, um, anything else, phenomena? He also had several conceptions of the, of the, uh, time and also conception seven conceptions of the ego maybe even thought it was possible to know yourself okay okay Wittgenstein um, he, he's the one who criticized uh, them it seems that they gave hope you know at least on Nietzsche not as much but Wittgenstein seems to have criticized but his approach is very similar to Kant Kant really accepted the logic and language of Aristotle, predicate calculus, I mean predic predicate proposition, uh, structure of sentences or propositions of the, uh, yeah, in the uh, organon or the pre-analytics uh, and the, sec and the uh, posterior analytics of Aristotle's logic, where he discusses the syllogism and the sentences or propositions and the syllogism. So Kant used that as a basis for his system to analyze thinking, because language and thought is what we use for thinking, so these are the tools, so Kant analyzed them. Um, so he came to conclude that really metaphysics was not possible. Okay, and Kant I think we discussed a lot, so, so Wittgenstein did a very similar thing. In his first work, he, he also analyzed language and uh, logic, but this time he, he used the logic of Frege and Russell, because this was the new logic. Um, Frege is considered the founder of modern logic. So he, so Wittgenstein analyzed their, their, this new instead, because unlike Kant, who used Aristotle.
Well, really, both of them are very, very simplistic because uh, mathematic and lo math, math and logic is much, much more sophisticated. Even before Kant, you had the calculus. Um, see my 1,000 methods of reasoning, of logic, um, mathematics, and algorithm. Um, anyway, so that's how Wittgenstein began. But his, de his ideas developed. He's mostly known for his later ideas. So he thought that his idea is that uh, problems in philosophy can be solved by analyzing the, uh, the structure of language. Really, in a way, this is similar to Kant because Kant solved the antimonies by ar by analyzing the arguments and arguing that the syllogism of the logic, the, the proposition, was not valid because one proposition took it in an empirical sense and one in a transcendental sense, the the unconditioned. That was the error. So, so Wittgenstein so thought yet, yeah, but then he. So then he thought actually that you can actually found metaphysics on the analysis of language, which is in a way it goes way beyond Kant, because Kant did not accept that. But then he argued that uh, that you can have many many languages and uh, the it's like it's a game, it's, uh, arbitrary in a way, so you cannot. You cannot do that because it's the world that determines what language you have. In a way, also he it was like like uh, like Kant because he saw things, um, ideas, objects. Like the question was in sentences, you, could, you had to be able to reduce them to, to terms that could be that were atomic that could be defined. In in Kant's Greek dialectic. Uh, all the metaphysical propositions were about ideas, that is, the soul, world, or God. But then these were ideas that cannot be given an exper in experience. Uh, you need for ideas to be given, for ideas have that you have to have a schema, according to Kant. And these cannot have a schema, so, so for Kant, these, uh, these ideas were, were empty. Now, Wittgenstein has a similar similar idea. He also rejects all these uh, metaphysical principles, but no, he doesn't say they're empty. He just says they're meaningless because uh, the way you give meaning to, to a sentence is if you can uh, define, if you can it has a proper structure, and by at first like the the posit positivist of the Vienna Circle, you can give it by if it's its principle of verification. So, for like even for mathematics, if you can give a proof, or for um, for uh, other things uh, later, and um, Wittgenstein took it for you can uh, show its meaning, but you can show how it's to be used. Uh, but these ideas, you cannot do neither that nor that. It seems anyway. But that, I think maybe Wittgenstein, the reason why maybe it's called uh, analytical philosophy, the, the school founded by Wittgenstein, or maybe even Frege, is because Kant made a distinction between an analytical proof and, and synthetic proof. And according to Kant, uh, existence is not an analytic, it's synthetic. You have to go outside the concept. So, if someone like Wittgenstein accepts only an analytical propositions, that means that for him, um, reason cannot prove anything in, a, in existence. Just like Kant believed, can't prove anything a priori. So therefore, philosophy philosophy was empty, at least ontology or a priori. Um, so unlike Saint Anselm or, or Descartes or Spinoza gave a, an ontological proof of the existence of God. Um, 
so you have so you could not give analytical so analytical analytical philosophy are those that uh, believe that you cannot prove anything by uh, analysis or for for uh, Kant uh, analytical propositions they, they use the principle of contradiction so so according to Kant really you couldn't prove anything with, with the analysis of propositions or the principle of contradiction but I disagree with that I argue that some things exist in all worlds and since we exist in the world the world exists therefore you can prove that some things exist uh, in our world I disagree with Kant on that and therefore with Wittgenstein uh, also in terms of meaning my mind has had a way of knowing things like to know God you can know God by proving things right like I said so so there's other another way of proving this or, or herself had an idea you take out things from objects that are not necessary to it so there's other ways of giving meaning to to the ideas even if you cannot uh, get an experience of them you can use reason can anything else um, So again, I think Wittgenstein said that you you can uh, know natural science, uh, but he, he rejected the idea of a science of psychology because for him, uh, language was a first of all it has a whole context that you learn and you share with other people and. There's no such thing as a private language. You learn language by uh, by reference to objects outside of you. Uh, so you cannot describe what goes on inside your mind to other people. So there was another problem that he might even kind of uh, criticize for Searle because um, um, for Searle I think even wanted to study the inside of the mind like for psychology but, but it seems that Wittgenstein believed that you cannot cut off uh, the, the world that uh, your experience from the world that knowledge of the of your experiences depends on knowledge of the world there's, there's con uh, things that help clarify your, your your psychological world so so that might be a criticism of, of her soul if he was aware of his work um, but anyway it seems like uh, but the uh, they all are there. This anyway, so far it seems that they leave out the idea of God. I don't know, maybe even Cohen and Kant. Because for, for Kant, you can prove the existence of God just like you can prove the existence of the of the eye or the or the basis of the world. But I, I I've been collecting almost like a thousand proofs of the existence of God that I'm working on. So, in a way, uh, Wittgenstein saw uh, philosophy as therapeutic. He studied Freud for a while, and and the, the propositions have many terms and they have many meanings and that. And the role of the philosopher was to clarify this. In a way, this is what uh, what Maimonides did uh, 800 years ago in his guide when he analyzed all the different meanings of words appearing in the scriptures and trying to, to make it make it see if there's any contradictions or determine if it's from God or not and what exactly the meaning is so I'm like analytical philosophy really goes back to 
or even Maimonides in a sense. Okay, well that's a little introduction about uh, <coughs> this, that stuff, go for some that is 2016. So now, okay, I'll continue, I'll go back to uh, 2008. Einstein notes, uh, Joseph Vuitton, page 24, continued. Well, Einstein also, like, uh, like I said before, also challenged Kant's view by arguing that uh, space and time are not a priori like Kant said, but uh, can be defined because we know the speed of light and uh, we can uh, we know that the velocity is equal to distance over time so we can uh, take a unit distance and, and uh, measure time how long it takes for this for the light to travel that distance. And he created a theory of relativity which was confirmed and and made predictions which were confirmed. In a way uh, Einstein attacked Kant indirectly and even Kant attacked Aristotle indirectly only. They did not have not had on. I think Galileo attacked uh, Aristotle more directly in terms of the cosmos. <coughs> okay. Okay, page 24. It's 923. September 24, 2016. Okay, critique of Heisenberg. He created ma matrix mechanics, the, f the, uh, the first theory of quantum mechanics created. In his Nobel Prize winning principle, he used the wrong proof. He assumes that an object is a wave and a particle, okay, but not at the same time. Bohr did not explain why measuring an entity in different ways gave, gave different results. Nor did Einstein, but Einstein identified mass and energy. So the object can act as a wave at one time and a particle at other times. But it is it's because matter, a particle, can go into energy, a wave, and energy back into matter. This will be necessary also if it if it is put in agreement with the Aristotelian. Like Maimonides who held that the universe is eternal, but it is right anyway, since even if Einstein said that the speed limit at that of light, it must be finite no matter what. So observing any particle will take time for light to record its position by bouncing off it and coming to our eyes. So the particle will move in that time. So Eisenberg is right using this new proof. Also, Heisenberg argues that the wave and particle pictures agree with when describing subatomic phenomena. Well, that is good for him, really, since it means that there is no need for a theory of wave-particle duality. One of them is enough. Indeed, it helps support the view that, really, you always have only particles anyway. You just treat them as waves since they are so small, position is vague, or have so many of them that can't track all of them, large group of particles, but once one must and the existence of transitions from particles to waves, and vice versa. A, w a wave needs nothing. A wave needs something waving, and so it must be one or more particles. If it does not have mass, then it will not be part of this universe, and rather a part of realm beyond it. Uh, well, but really, uh, they say that fields can can exist independently of matter. Uh, like I said, Maxwell, uh, and uh, detected by Hertz, but but also uh, really uh, this quantum mechanical uh, duality of Heisenberg and Schrodinger really could be simply that you, uh, you if you have a math if you have it's just ma the mathematics. Don't confuse math and physics. You can describe a group of particles by a, by a wave, but that's just a math mathematical equation. But it still could be just a, a group of particles, or vice versa. The question which one it is, 
you have to figure out. Maybe that's another kind of antimony that you can have, just like Kant's antimony. The, the math can be either ant a group of particles, and you can describe it as a wave or as a, a, a group of particles. It's the math, but the, what is the physics is something else. Okay, uh, page 25. Uh, okay, Unification as a final topic. Critique of Einstein, critique of physics, Copernican revolution, super theory, anti-unification theory. Physicists and biologists and some psychologists too assume that the laws of physics apply to the human body, are you organic or, or a living entity, just as it applies to inorganic or non-living bodies. Indeed, they assume that the laws of physics apply to the soul and to God. Divide the laws of physics into several types. Number one, the, lo the laws of physics, <coughs> uh, non-living non things. Number two, the laws of biology, visible part of living things. Number three, the laws of psychology, invisible part of living things. Number four, the laws of sociology, groups of living things. Number five, the laws of theology, invisible creator. So then all of the physicists want to unify. Uh, I want to I wanna divide. Compare how physics divided now. Compare how physics is divided now for unification attempted. Number one, the law of gravity. Number two, the law of electricity. Number three, the law of magnetism. Number four, the law of strong force. Number five, the law of weak f weak field. Einstein's unification of physics. He unified the is the unified theory of gravity and electromagnetic theory in his masterpiece the, masterpiece, the Meaning of Relativity. He had reservations because gravity and EM fields entered as separate concepts. And also because of the fact that quantum mechanics described the world using a, a few quantum numbers. This, this meant that solutions of discrete, discrete whereas, whereas GR is based on continuity. It uses tensor calculus. Well, in a way, even tensor calculus probably could be discrete. I mean, if you use uh, divided differences to de to define it instead of and limits instead of uh, the anal analytical calculus. So he believed that therefore algebra should be sufficient. Only discrete orbits in atoms and molecules were permitted in quantum theory. But we can explain this by introducing a law of equilibrium. We find this law as the fact that orbiting particles like electrons or planets will remain in orbit and are stable there, so that if they absorb some energy and they will re then they will remain undisturbed in their motion or will budge but will return to their original or stable orbit unless it, it absorbs sufficient energy to move to another stable orbit so that it can go and stay there. Or or go uh, or become a rogue uh, planet or electron. And you have to, you have to use the inequalities. Also, quantum theory raised another problem be beyond EM theory of Maxwell. There is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which sets limits on simultaneous measurements of both position and momentum of of any particle which limits relativity theory, but the proof they gave was not a valid proof of it. Uh, really, maybe I argue that even uh, measuring uh, things that change too fast or too slow the time may, may be also uh, limited, although I don't know if that's similar to Heisenberg principle. Unification theory. You only have different size charges, question mark. All there is out there is charge. All there is out there is energy and charged particles. Indeed the property called the property called charge may be caused by spinning. Explanation of forces of physics. Number one, gravity force. Mass is just a concept referring to very large groups of charges or intense energy. The net charge is zero. Number two, magnetic force is just a concept referring to medium-sized groups of charges or polarized. Number three, electric force is just a concept referring to small groups of charges. Number four, strong force or quarks and electrons are just concepts, just a concept referring to very, very small charges. 
Number five, weak force, alpha, beta, gamma particles are just concepts refer referring to charges so small that they are virtually radiation. Add photons to question mark. Unification theory question mark. A planet is just an oversized electron. Gravitational field is just an, an electric field. The case of Newton and Einstein for the former and Maxwell and Heisenberg for the latter. Or better stated, the force of gravity reduces to the force of electricity. Particles are made up of positive and negative charges. And a, a neutral particle just means that they seem to be balanced to within measurement. The positive charges inside one object attract the negative charges inside the other object and vice versa. And positive charges of one particle repel the positive charges inside the other particle and similarly for the other two pairs of negative charges in each particle. And this leads to the bond at an equilibrium distance. This bond we call gravity when, when speak of objects at the microscopic scale. There is also a magnetic force, but that reduces to electricity by Maxwell's equations. And even Einstein showed that it reduces uh, by, change of, uh, by change of coordinates, I think. Uh, unification theory, super revolution. Einstein only wanted to unify general relativity and quantum mechanics or electromagnetism with, within his physics. Need much more question mark. We really need to unify all the po all the following super domains. Um, philosophy, no, number one, philosophy uses logic, number two, Science uses mathematics. Number three, religion uses parables. Number four, acting uses algorithms. I mean, planning and that. Number five, engineering strategy uses meta logic. Uh, page 27. Unification theory, superior evolution. Wait, the electron obeys Coulomb's law and Lorentz law of motion, and it obeys law of motion of general relativity, force of gravity, force of electricity, and force of magnetism. So you just join those together in analyzing the motion of an electron. But if the electron is not a rogue electron but bound electron, i.e. part of an atom or molecule, then or molecule, then you must apply uh, apply our law of equilibrium in addition to other physical laws to determine if the electron planet will go off its orbit. Even Galileo and Newton's law of inertia must be modified since an object will continue in a straight line even if a force is applied to it, if the force is not sufficiently strong to make it off, to make it shake it off its linear path. So I change uh, Newton, Galileo Newton's law of inertia by adding inequalities. Also Einstein revised it, so I changed that. So. Uh, Joseph Beaton. Okay, relativity, quantum mechanics, electromagnetism. The concept of gravity is really inapplicable at the quantum level since at that level one must use individual charges and their motion and fields. One can no longer use the center of positive and the center of negative charge. There are four forces of Coulomb's law, electric, Lorentz force, magnetic, not just mass, master Newton's and, and Einstein's force gravity. And so there is no net, there's no net center of charge anymore, which is left after you use centers of charge as approximation. Problem. Also, the force of equations of gravity, electricity, and magnetism are for gravitostatics, electrostatics, and magnetostatics. So one can't find force equivalent motions of particles if these fields are changing with time, except at fixed instant of time. Uh, though the field equations of Maxwell use a changing electric and magnetic field, need new science question mark. Since electrodynamics describes charges moving but as at regular currents, but as regular currents, what about magne magnetodynamics question mark? Is it like thermodynamics which is used for the, the phenomena of heat in equilibrium and also have science of heat transfer for studying changes in heat. The, for, the force above in the heavens and here below is the same as Newton's mechanics claims and is, and is well accepted now, and even Einstein accepted it. 
Before Galileo and Newton, for, every for a very long time, people believed that the cosmos is where God and the angels are. Aristotle held that the cosmos to be, to be different in nature from our, own, from our world, so that different laws applied below and above. Even the, the, even the cosmos were made from a different element, a fifth element. So space travel would have been out of the question for him. If he even believed we could fly here on Earth one day, when people died in history, it is possible they went to some star system, 